Hey groupies, welcome back to Form and Therapy and to, well, this is not a listening party. Uh, this is what I guess we are rebranding as a listen along. Uh, this is going to be a new format that's going to be happening with all albums going forward in the future. Uh, I'll explain a l in a little bit why things are going to, why things are changing. But uh, today we are checking out Twice's second studio album. This is Eyes Wide Open. We have uh, 13 tracks on this album. Uh, specifically, we have 12 B-sides to check out. We have Up No More, no, sorry, Hell in Heaven, Up No More, Do What We Like, Bring It Back, Believer, Queen, Go Hard, Shot Clock, Handle It, Depend On You, Say Something, and Behind the Mask. Yeah, Behind the Mask. Wow, that is a lot of songs. So that's a lot of songs to get through. Um, okay, so the reason why things are changing Basically, the reaction world is basically being interrupted by giant corporations. And we are, it's getting harder and harder to make these reactions for you guys. And people are going to say, oh, can't you do this? Can't you do that? Can't you do that? You have to understand, uh, I'm a video producer. Even before I did YouTube, this is my job. Um, so I, I do know what I'm doing. Um, so when I say that I have exhausted every option, trust me, I have exhausted every option. Okay. So one of, one of the issues is listening parties as a whole are being blocked a lot more on YouTube now, especially with my channel, because my channel is a lot bigger. Uh, it just gets blocked a lot. Um, I, I just, I tried to then split it into parts, but then splitting it into parts, uh, worked for a moment and then block. Um, so we are reaching a point where, uh, it is becoming much more difficult to upload listening parties onto YouTube. And then I was going to just stream these on Twitch, you know, do a live listening party on Twitch and that way people can enjoy it and then upload it without the audio on YouTube. But now, even on Twitch, I can't share the audio with you guys. With with uh, the new Twitch uh, rules coming in, you cannot live stream audio. You know, people are gonna say, oh, just delete the VOD afterwards. That is no longer the case. You can't just delete the VOD afterwards. If you live stream copyrighted music now, not only do they ban and delete your account, you are banned as a user. You can't make a new account. And so, the situation is getting crazy with copyright and all we want to do is just come together as a community and listen to music together. That's all we're trying to do. But I also under, and I also understand from these label standpoint, why they are cracking down on listening parties because, you know, as a producer and as someone who has worked with artists and people behind the scenes before, I understand that essentially what listening parties are, we're just basically essentially sharing the album for free in its entirety on the internet, you know? And at that point, I'm like, you know what? You're right. It's 13 songs being uploaded onto one video. People who are watching my listening party, who are watching my reaction to it, I am taking away technically all those streams that could be had for that album. And so what we're going to be doing um, going forward is we're not going to include the audio, uh, either on Twitch or on YouTube, because literally this is the only way we can upload it. We can't even stream live. We can't even upload live, uh, um, without it. And you guys have to pull up the music on your own as well. Now I do have my screen being shared right here. So you guys can see my iTunes player. So you guys know what time code I'm at. I'm not going to stop or pause while we're listening. So it doesn't interrupt us. And also, um, you can adjust your music volume yourself so that whenever I am talking, you can turn your music down to hear what I have to say and you can turn it back up and you can adjust it freely. Uh, so by doing this, we are also contributing to more streams. I, I also saw it from this perspective of, hey, if this listening party gets 50,000 views and people have to play the music themselves to watch along with me, we are contributing 50,000 streams to the artist on iTunes or Spotify. So it's really just a, a much more positive situation for the labels. So 
Yeah. So if you guys want to watch along this video, I'm sorry it's going to be so complicated, but be sure to pull the music, you know, either on your computer, on your phone, watch separately. You're going to need two devices. So, yeah, let's just get into it. We're going to start with heaven and hell. All right. Heaven and or sorry. No, hell and heaven. OK. All right. Hell and heaven. We're going to we're going to start on my count. On three, two, one, go. OK. All right. Here we go. Three, two, one. One, go. Oh my God, that's loud. Okay, I really like this pre-chorus so far. Okay, wow. Immediate impression that I'm getting off of the very first track off the album. It was, it, first of all, the song was so simple, but I think what is kind of blowing my mind is actually their singing, the technique. It's so much more mature. I mean, they haven't done cute music in a hot minute, but there's something about this that just feels so much more mature, even more so than the Feel Special album. You know? Like, I love kind of like the the very like airy kind of f fluttering kind of like technique that they're using with their voice. Na, 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 na. Like, wow. Wow. Also, is Chungun on this album? Because I know she's taking a break from promotions, but I think near the end, I thought I heard it sounded like Chungun's voice. And I thought, whoa, whoa, that is some incredible, incredible technique. You know, I think right now what first of all, what I actually like a lot about that song is like it's a little sexy, but like not in like your usual sexy way. You know, it's very refreshing. 
you know it also has kind of like a more tribal sort of a like uh even though it's called what hell in heaven it had sort of like a tribal sort of like a jung jungle-esque element to it right um i feel like um if the music in involved them in the jungle uh that might have worked someone in the live stream is saying caribbean um uh, yeah somewhere between i would say tribal and tropical you know uh, I really, 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 really like that. That is the most mature sound I have heard from them. And I think right now, I'm I'm getting ahead of myself by proclaiming this, but just in this first song alone, and I, I'm not saying I never respected them as singers before, but this is the first time where I really thought, wow, they are like really showing their versatility as singers, not like musicians. I'm talking like just from a vocal aspect. Wow, they are really, really showing their versatility. So it was really, really cool. Okay, we're gonna listen to Up No More. All right, y'all ready? All right, let's get into this. All right, on my mark, three, two, one. I immediately love this vibe. Was that Tyon in the beginning? Oh my goodness. Oh my God, this song is incredible. Holy moly. Who was that at the end? Was that was that Chio? 
Somebody, somebody ended that. Somebody ended that song with a nice laugh. I don't want to waste my time. That was, ooh, there was something about that that was so beautiful, so soulful. Whoa. Okay. So, ooh, what was what was what was that song called again? What was that song called again? I, up no more was it? Um, that was, that was like, that was like that was like. City pop, if it was more poppin', you know, it's like more pop than city, you know, like city pop is known for its more kind of chill, grooving sort of vibe, and it does have that um, through throughout the song. But that chorus, that chorus, city pop never gets that exciting and crazy. It never pops that much in the chorus. And I love, love, love. Okay, that chorus was so catchy. Na, 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 na. Oh. Oh my God. That was so, so good. You know, what is blowing my mind about this album so far, I think this is the most different twice as music has sounded. Not only does it sound more mature, but it kind of sounds more. I don't know. It, it it feels less idly, if that makes sense. Not that there's anything wrong with idle music, but there it, it, it's starting to guess a little bit, a little bit less like idle music, and it's sort of like maturing into something else, or as some people say, maturing. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Okay, uh, I really really enjoyed that. Let's check out "Do What We Like" next. All right, on my mark, three, two, one. Is that Mina?
from that first pre-course I knew. From that first pre-course, the moment it started, I had a suspecting feeling. Are we are we getting into dance music? Like, are we getting to like festival music? And what we like is it what we like or do what we like? Either either one. This song. The only way I can describe this song, the perfect way to describe this song, is like if this was a chain smoker song, but like, you know, good. Like, that was amazing. The song is borderline cathartic, you know? It's exploding with a lot of summer colors. Um, it's very refreshing. Um, it would work perfectly as a festival song. It, 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 um, it very much, ah, this is, twice is so, they're so fucking, whoever the A&R is for Twice's team, they're so manipulative and they're so smart. They're so smart. A lot of, like, I saw a handful of people that did not like Twice as more and more, you know, which sounded kind of a lot like festival music, right? But I feel like Twice keeps doing title tracks. They go like, they when they dive into a new genre, they go a little bit soft with the title track and then they go harder on the next album onto it. They almost perfect that sound. You know, they they did it with uh, Fancy You. Like, think about think like think about think about it like this. Um, if Twice had just released Love Foolish out of nowhere, that would have been super jarring, right? So Twice kind of eased you into, hey, we're gonna start doing a more Vogue Vogue type sound with a lot of synths. So they brought in Fancy. And then they started easing you in, right? And then they went something, they went with something hard like Love Foolish. Same with More and More. You, you can't, I feel like More and More, that era, it just came and went. I feel like a lot of people did not talk about More and More, uh, More and More's era. I feel like, uh, at least, maybe it's different. Maybe I'm wrong, but at least from my, from my like field of view, people were not crazy about more and more you know the 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 hype and transcendence for more and more was not the same as something like feel special or stuff like that right but then they had to do more and more to bring us something like do what we like again it's it's stepping stones twice keeps making stepping stones with their title tracks they do something that's a little bit more i would say commercial friendly that's of that genre and then they do they go harder they go harder with their b-sides in the next album and that's what do what we like felt like do what we like felt like a much more better produced like version of more and more obviously the two songs don't sound alike but more and more, I would say the biggest relation to that is like it sounds like festival music, right? Even if even if the instrumental is different, it was very much festival music. And so I feel like they just did they just went that same route of more and more, but damn, they went harder. They went harder. Um, okay, so next up we're gonna check out Bring It Back once again on my count. Three, all right, on my count, three, two, one.
Well, wow. That is uh that is one way to end a song. Oh my. Was that was that Cheong? I felt like Cheong. Only only Cheong is that offensive. <sighs> okay. Um Ooh, that bridge. It's it's almost like the entire song was building up towards that bridge. It was worth the wait. I will say, uh, I'm not that into the the main chorus. Um, mainly because this song like borders on R and B. And if you don't know, I'm not an R&B fan. It's not completely an R&B song, but it borders on R&B. And that's just not my type. But that bridge. That bridge. Oh, my God. Oh. That. Oh. I will say that is a song that I am definitely going to add to my album. Even though even though I borderline don't like it. That's borderline. I still like it. Because that bridge is worth the wait. That bridge is worth the wait. That bridge is worth the wait. It's it's kind of like um Luna so what. Y'all can say whatever you want about Luna so what. That bridge is worth the wait. You know? And I'm that I'm that, I'm that same way. You because it's also that that bridge and bring it back. It's also a kind of bridge that I've never heard before, you know, and it's almost like you can't just, by the way, you can't just skip to that bridge either. I feel like the reason that bridge is so good is because the song is so slow. You need that slow buildup. You need the repetitive hook and that is why the bridge has so much impact because it's a disruption of that sort of um that sort of um i wouldn't say monotony but that sort of like repetitiveness you know um okay so we're going to jump into what is this one called this is called believer all right all right all right prepare your bibles let's do this 3 2 1 Oh, is this fucking TLC? Is this fucking Destiny's Child? What's going on? This is like um this is like a mix of like dance, house music and kind of like runway music. Sounds like borderline runway music.
Was that a Chiho solo song? Because this is no offense. I'm I'm not trying to insult the rest of twice. I really felt like I only heard Chiho's voice. And Chiho was channeling the late great Beyonce. Like like you, you, you guys like did you hear whenever Chiho sang? Like you knew it was Chiho because like Chiho tapped into like just like that guttural low key, just just like uh, no, no, like like oh dang. Oh. Wow. That was wow. Now, it's not my favorite song on the album. Uh, I like it a lot. Um uh, I wouldn't say it's up there. Ow. I just smashed my finger. <laughs> Anyways, um, I wouldn't say it's up there, but I liked it. I enjoyed it. Um, I don't really have anything else to say beyond that. It was kind of just like that song felt more like kind of like a palate cleanser um, after after Bring It Back. After such a jarring song like Bring It Back, this felt like a... You know, like how you're doing when, when you're doing a, a taste test of food, you know, before you eat the next food, you got to drinks, you got to gargle and drink some water to cleanse your palate. This was the palate cleanser. All right. Next up, we are checking out Queen. All right. So let's get into it on my count. Three, two, one. Clown music? Oh, I like that. I like that. Wow, this song is really interesting. Wow. It feels like I'm listening to a track from like a Broadway musical. I mean, the brass definitely helps, but even just like the nah, like the way just like, ooh. Ooh, it's oozing with so much style. Someone said Chicago vibes. I see that. Oh, I love that hook. Ooh. Ooh. 
I loved that. You know, the 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 your queen line, it makes me think like especially with like the the way this song plays out. I mean, we talk about uh we talk about it sounding like a Broadway song. It it sounds like a very specific moment in a Broadway song. It's like imagine like there's a main character and they're introduced like to a brand new world and um let's say like I imagine like I'm gonna paint you a picture. I imagine like a, a, a character um getting into like walking into like a like a cigar club, right? And uh they're discovering like, I don't know, burlesque dancing for the first time. And there's like a mat like a madam at the cigar club and the madam at the cigar club like starts this song and is like telling the main character that you're a queen, you know? Like instilling instilling like this confidence into the main character or in this sense you you know it feels like they're singing to you the listener and telling you you're a queen and it's like everyone coming together you know like that big part of uh, uh of a musical when it's just like all coming together and everyone's like um uh kind of singing and dancing and that's really really dope i i like it a lot it's dope All right, uh, okay, let's listen to, this is called Go Hard. You think this is a ballad? All right, three, two, one. I don't know, still might be a ballad. Give it a sec. This drum pad hits harder than that chorus. Listen, if you have a song titled Go Hard, you'd expect the chorus to, oh, I don't know. 
I don't know, maybe go hard. Listen, this song is a borderline 10 out of 10. Like every other aspect of this song is perfect. The buildup, the low vocals, the pre-chorus, the the way those drums hit. The that, that's the problem. The drums hit harder than that pre-chorus does. I was like, these electric plastic drum pads, these drum, these fake ass drum pads are hitting harder than the chorus. And so the chorus for me is wildly disappointing. And I've talked about this before. I don't like those sax choruses, okay? The sax choruses, the, you heard one, you heard them all, okay? So I'm not, I'm not into that. But holy moly, especially like, G <laughs> listen, the MVP of this album might be Jiho, because once again, Jiho, she was like channeling like her inner, her inner gangster because when she like at the drop, when she says, cause we go hard or, and we go hard, whatever we go hard. When she says that she says it with such an aggressive tone. She's like, we go hard. I'm like, Oh damn. Damn. Jiho really. Wow. Chiyo's deep ass voice is, I mean, like, wow. Wow. Her voice is even deeper than mine. I mean, wow. Chiyo could, Chiyo's low voice could just walk circles around my block. It's crazy. It's crazy. Um, I actually really like that. I really liked it. The bridge is dope too. I love just like, it's so loud and powerful and strong. It's such a powerful, powerful song. But again, the one thing that just the chorus, it falls flat for me. And so I give this song a nine out of 10 near perfect song. It has one fatality. It has one fatality and that's its chorus. But if we're looking beyond the chorus, that song was super, super metal. It was dope. It was dope. All right, okay, let's check out this next song. It's called Shot Clock. All right, on my count, three, two, one. Sounds like a drum line. Oh my god! Oh my god. This chorus sounds like fucking 17 shining diamonds. Oh my God, this section, that build up. This song has so many similarities to Shining Diamond. Oh my God.
Ooh, that was fun. That's a very, very fun song. It almost sounds like, it almost sounds like old school twice, but like matured up, you know, like, you know how twice used to have that very like core, like very cheery kind of like chorus line previously, you know, I, you know, it's like, it sounded more like girl group, like schoolyard music. Now it's, it's more like if, 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 Earlier twice was like middle school. This is like high school drumline cheerleaders. Like that was dope. Uh, I liked shot clock shot clock a lot. I cannot unhear the similar progression and the similarities to 17 shining diamond, especially that chorus where it goes shot clock. Like sounds very similar to shining diamonds. Eh? Like, Oh, it sounds so, oh, oh, it's just, I, I love, I love like great loud fanfare type of music. Um, um, it, it kind of reminds me a little bit of get loud. I think I prefer get loud a little bit more, but I like it a lot. All right. Okay. Next up, we are checking out handle it by twice. I mean, of course, it's by twice. Who else would it be? All right, on my mark, three, two, one. All right, where's this going? Where's this going? Was that Chongyun? Was that Chongyun after Jiyo? Chongyun's really been popping off her versatility in this album. This chorus is tripping me out, though. This chorus, like, you've got such, like, a very, like, sparse instrumental up until this point, And then you get, like, this very, like, colorful, like, very uh, playful, jazzy section. All right, uh, handle it. That was very good. Uh, it was, it was at, at in the beginning. I thought it was going to be a more Latin inspired song. That was not the case. It was something of a cross between a a chill cafe song and a sexy jazz bar song. Somewhere in the middle. It's not necessarily one or the other. But it's somewhere in the middle. I really, really enjoy that. It's nice and chill. Um, 
I, I feel like the very simple guitar accompaniment really let you appreciate their vocals a lot more. That's why, like, you know, uh, Chong Yun's voice stood out to me a lot. Um, Chiyo impressed me again. You know, after hearing Chiyo's deep ass voice throughout this entire album, all of a sudden you hear how high she can go here. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, that's, that's, um, that's handle it. Uh, we're going to be checking out Depend on You next. All right, here we go. On my mark, three, two, one. Was that Mina? Oh, oh, the basic, the basic bitch white girl in me is about to pop off to this song. Hold on, where's this course going? Oh, man, I thought this was going to be a basic bitch type of white girl, you know, chill EDM type song. I was wrong. That was not it. This song is beautiful. This song is beautiful and amazing. And what I find surprising about this song is the emotional component to it. This song is uplifting. It's euphoric. It's refreshing, but it's also poignant. The song is very, it's very, it's very poignant. You know, I feel like every part of this song except the chorus feels like it's going to build up into like your typical EDM, um, uh, ch like chill EDM uh, chorus track. But that's not where the chorus goes. The chorus goes in such a poignant, very beautiful direction. It's honestly, it, it, the song feels kind of very naked and honest you know there's something about like there's like a 
I feel like I'm just saying buzzwords at this point. You know, there's a vulnerability to it, but I don't even know what that fucking means, but I feel it. You know what I mean? There's something about this where it's just, it's just a little bit, it's just a little bit beautiful. It's beautiful. All right. Uh, by the way, for the people watching in this video, I need to address this and I need to address all these sinful people. There are 500 people in this Twitch stream right now. While I was listening to this song, and even now, people are talking about twerking to this song, uh, sad twerking to this soul, song, or soulful twerking to this. Stop. You sinful sinners, just stop. Stop Stop twerking. This is not the song to twerk to. Stop it. Just all. If you are watching this on YouTube after the fact, if you're watching the video of this, if you think about, hey, I think I could twerk to this song. Don't. Don't twerk to this song. Stay in school. All right. Next up is Say Something. We're going to be checking out Say Something. So once again, on my mark, three, two, one. There's that city pop vibe again. It's a little sexy. It's a little groovy. I'm into it. Oh, fuck, I fuck with this song hard. This fucking chorus is catchy as fuck. I who whoever whoever does that part that goes na 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 na. I love that part. My chat is saying it's Chungyun. Apparently, uh, Chungyun be popping off in this fucking album. Apparently.
Oh, and the fade out. And the fade. Oh. Listen, here's the thing. Music, if you if you if you think about modern pop music, most modern pop music, they don't fade out anymore. You guys especially if anybody listens to retro music like actual old music, if you notice back in the day, old music used to always fade out. F- fade out, fade out. Even like uh, up to like the 90s, even like 90s music would fade out. We don't fade out anymore. You know, it's always like an abrupt and, you know, I don't necessarily always like that. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. It's like a shock value. But sometimes you need a nice fade out. And that fade out was perfect, especially with that sax. Oh, listen. That. That is how you use the sax. All right. Listen. The sax is like... The sax is like a surgical knife, okay? What pop music does with the sax is, I think, inappropriate. They just use the sax willy-nilly everywhere and anywhere. But you, you have to... The best way to use a saxophone is to use it carefully. Is to use it purposely and here it was used in it was used in a much more it was used in a much more refrained much more artistic way you know it didn't feel lazy to me you know it was just oh what a beautiful use of the sax oh my god epic you know um that song that song sounded very it, it's very much in line with what was the previous song that Chiyo worked on uh was that up no more was that up no more or was it do what we like there was another uh, there was another city pop song yeah up no more see whereas up no more up no more was also a very city pop inspired song whereas up no more was more pop and less city this song was more city and less pop you know, up no more. When it came to the course, it was popping. It was loud. It was catchy. It had that K-pop hook to it. I would say this song. I would say "Say Something" was a lot more city pop inspired. This is way more city. Like this was like a lot more chill, a lot more gro- groovy, and even the chorus, the catchiness in the chorus, the melody that they have. Na 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 na. It's it's a lot more low key. It's a lot more toned down, and it feels more like a, actually like more of a '90s melody. It, it feels a little bit dated in that regard. So I really enjoyed that. That was dope. Oh my god, I fucking loved it. All right. Um. Okay. Last song on the album. This is called "Behind the Mask." All right. Uh, I heard that uh, Hayes actually. Uh, uh, wrote the song so i am interested to check this out let's get into it all right guys final song on the album prepare your little finglets on my count <clears throat> three two one go Yo, I fuck with this vibe. Whoa. Whoa.
Okay, this has way much of a heavier Western production, but like the good kind. I like it a lot. Fucking Chihyo, calm down, Chihyo. All right. Wow. That was That was incredible. Um that song hits That song hits hard. It's a great closer to the album. It's got a great sense of finality to it. Love how heavy the song is, how hard it hits. Uh, a lot of rich, uh, very full sounding textures. Um, you know, you always get that when you have like a darker synth, um, synth inspired album. You know what that song sounded like? It sounded very specifically, especially in the beginning. It it sounded like a song that be that belonged on a specific American pop artist album. It's a bit old, so some people might not be uh, aware of it. Uh, well, I, I guess she herself isn't an American singer, um, but um, uh, if you guys have ever heard uh, Tovlo, this song sounds like it belongs on the Queen of the Clouds album. If anybody has listened to Tovlo, Tovlo's, Tovlo's uh, debut album, the Queen of the Clouds album, her music all sounds like this. So if you really liked Behind the Mask and you want music similar to Behind the Mask, I would suggest check out Queen, uh, Queen of the Clouds album by Tovlo. It's amazing. Um, but back to this song. Behind the Mask, wow. One, I love I love how dark it is. Um, you know, it, it's got it's got a moody atmosphere, right? And it's also it's also a bit emotional. I mean, it, it has uh, it has a lot to do with their singing as well. But I think mixed with sort of like the moody atmosphere and their singing is just wow. Love that the na, na, na. it was wow. Okay, so wow, time just flew by. That was twelve songs, guys. We have been rolling for an hour and 15 minutes. How, how, 
how did an hour and 15 minutes just flow by flow by fly by like nothing okay i cannot tell you what is a favorite on the album i really cannot um i think up no more is actually up there i think up no more is up there i think hell in heaven is up there i think say something is up there and then everything else in between there's too many songs that like i've already forgotten what half of these songs sound like and i need to listen to it again like I know there was like a, I like, I can't remember, was it Do What We Like? There was one that was, that sounded like a Chainsmoker song, but it wasn't, like it was actually good. Um, uh, Depend On You was amazing. Um, so I would say like, in terms of like, uh, like immediate comes to mind favorites, Up No More uh, is probably up there. Uh, I really like Behind the Mask as well, but I would also have to listen to it. Album review. If you guys want an album review, I will do an album review uh, because right now my thoughts on these songs are just, they're very fresh. You know, I've only listened to it once. Um, I would love to dive deep into it. You know, to in fact, it, it is actually, um, it is pertinent uh, to today. <laughs> By the way, someone in the comments just said the slaughtery to chain smokers. Yeah. Um, fuck the chain smokers. Um, those racist assholes. Um, I mean, like I, I watched this interview with where they were making like dog eating jokes. Like it was, it was about Asians. It was, it was so annoying. Anyways. Um, I would love to do an album review for this because today, you know, I released, uh, the album review for, uh, black pinks, the album. And, that is performing well and doing well. You know, I didn't think anyone would be interested in album reviews, but you know, if people like it, I'm, I'm down to do it. So yeah, if you guys want to see an album review for this, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, would love to check it out, but yeah, that was the listen along to twice as eyes wide open. I know that the new format is really inconvenient. Um, but I'm also going to have a separate video. It's going to be titled like listening parties are over or something like that. And I'm going to explain the whole situation and I'm going to explain why, why people's suggestions that you might have, like, why not do this? Why not try this? Why that doesn't work? You know, I've already been through everything. And so, um, people think they have uh, an idea or a suggestion, but I've already covered it. So, um, you know, we have to unfortunately stick with this new format, but I'll explain that in a later video. Thanks everyone for watching this video. If you enjoyed this, you know, go ahead and hit the like button, leave a comment. Let me know what's your ranking on this album for your favorite song. Let me know. Um, you don't need to give me a list of all your favorite songs. I'll, I'll do an album review. We'll probably do, we'll probably do a ranking list there. Uh, but I'd like, I'd like to know what song immediately pops off at you on the album. Like I said, for me, I think it's up no more and say something, but say something is also just like one of the more recent ones I listened to. So I do have to listen to it again. Um, right now I'm not going to give you an album rating. I can't. I've only listened to the uh, to these songs once, and I've got to listen to it way more to give it a proper album rating. So stay tuned for the review to see where I'm going to rate this. But thank you very much, everyone, for watching. If you want to support us, visit us at Patreon. Um, subscribe. Be notified when we upload a new video. And check out our other videos over here. And we'll see you guys in another video. Bye.